Hello and welcome to Kitsacast episode 19. I think I messed up the episode numbers yesterday. We're almost at episode 20. Uh, Kitsacast is a podcast with a very bad name, which should have a better name. Someone had a great name suggestion called Walk With Me because you're literally walking with me as I'm going through stages of my life, but also I'm making you walk. So don't forget to walk, put on your headphones, put on your shoes, go outside now and walk for however long this is going to be. Now, Kitsikas is a podcast where we discuss habits, routines, laugh hacks, improvements, daily routines. I said routines twice, so we discuss the routines of discussing routines. It's a podcast about routines. Now, if you're watching this for the first time, you might be like, what the fuck are you doing in a parked car in a parking lot? Now, if you're listening to this in audio, you might be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Because you won't know what I'm doing. So right now, it's almost 9 p.m. And my friend Martin, shout out to that motherfucker, He's not leaving comments to feed the algorithm. He's actually texting me on Viber. Hey, dude, change it. You know, help the algorithm a little bit. But I appreciate you listening to this shit. So he's been trolling me about fuel cars for the longest time. Since I got this test luck, he's like, oh, hello, one day you get back to fuel cars, yada, yada, yada. It's very awkward listening, recording this in a parking lot because people are passing by. And as soon as I pressed record, it's like I conjured a bunch of people. Like zombies that came from underground and they're like, instead of brains, they're like, People who record podcasts in a fucking parking lot. This is awkward. It's weird, whatever. I'll try to ignore the people passing in this fucking parking lot. So Martin has been trolling me about fuel cars. And yesterday, since I mentioned that I'm thinking, considering maybe changing this stupid car and getting a fuel car because it's going to simplify my life with the baby and travel and everything, he's, he, he trolled me again. And now I can hear his uncontrollable cackle. Like that addicting laughter that he has laughing at me sitting in a parking lot at 9 p.m. instead of being with my wife and daughter in the fucking hotel room and just chilling, I drove 12 minutes away to another hotel. I have to pay parking. <laughs> Shut up. I have to pay parking for the entire night and because this car is going to take 7 hours and 35 minutes to charge, so I'm not going to wake up at a random hour of the night to pick up the car. So I'll pay parking for the entire night and morning. In the morning, I'll have to, I'll have to walk from here to the other, to the hotel and it's raining, so I'll probably take an Uber or I'll put my steps in because I'm, Jesus, I'm 15,000 steps today, but the green ring is not full. So I'm going to fill the green ring probably, but tomorrow I'll have to take an Uber here, take an Uber back before breakfast. Like it ruins the entire flow because one day my daughter will grow up and be like, mama, where is Dada? And ma mama will be like, well, Dada is an idiot for getting an electric car. He's charging it in a random ass fucking hotel. Now, when we planned a trip with my wife, I remember when we picked up the car, I picked a hotel, this one. We were staying at the West Inn in Warsaw because I saw that this one has a Tesla charger. Like any hotel that has an electric charger will do. But I found this one because I thought Tesla chargers are special or whatever. And now, because the organizers booked the hotel from the conference, I had to drive from my hotel to this hotel to charge the freaking car. And Martin is still... Oh, you, th oh, you thought for a second Martin stopped laughing? Like he had to pause the video because like told you... I can hear the told you. Wait, let me open the window a little bit. Can you... Yeah, you can see the echoes coming from Macedonia that told you so. Maybe, like I like his suggestion of getting like a plug-in hybrid so I get the kind of the best of both worlds, but I'll, I'll think about it for now. I'll just sit here and my wife was like, well, you can record the podcast in the room because the baby, you know, like she's supposed to be sleeping and when it's time for sleeping, she becomes a stand-up comedian. Like she starts laughing for the first time today. She laughed back at my laugh. Like I was talking, my wife said something and I laughed and my, my daughter just looked at me and laughed back. Dude, this is... The most insane experience in life is just, hey, guy, stop staring. It's not that interesting. Motherfuckers are doing TikToks, you know, with, with their phones all the time. But God forbid you have a camera and a microphone and people are like, like, he literally did this. I was supposed to use one of my fingers, not sure which one, because yesterday I wanted to use one of them. I gave a guy thumbs up, if you remember from the previous episode. What the fuck was I saying, man? Where did I go on my tangents? On ta I need a pause functionality with rewind to watch what I was saying and to be like, oh, okay, now I can continue the sentence. Now that guy... Just moved here. Yeah. Watching my daughter grow is the most insane thing. Like today, I've been places with her. Like she'll in, in, let, let's start actually because I already did the intro. We're not going to do the Benji habits today. I don't have the setup to do the split screen and the other things right now. So um, let's start with yesterday night. So uh, it was Zico's birthday. We definitely didn't celebrate. I mentioned we're going to celebrate. It was like 15 minutes before 12. We were, uh, we were at the conference speaker's dinner for a while. We formed like a little circle of four people we were talking to. And then we went to the hotel, went to Zico's room. I set up the setup for the podcast. I recorded this. And then I was supposed to work on my talk, just at least to download the slides for my talk and rehearse it. 
Um, and sorry if the camera is shaking, but every time in, I move in the car, like the entire car moves, and that's also happening in other cars. Martin, you donut. But I, I'll try to sit still, which for me is like, this is already a torture. Like I'm trying, it's like, it's impossible to sit in this pose. And I'm getting a phone call. Let me just pause. Pause. Is it recording? Jesus. Now, I'm too lazy to edit that out. Like, honestly, I don't give a shit about editing. This is why I like doing the podcast, because I can just put unedited, you know, like, whatever. I, I don't care at the end of the day. And my wife in my contact books is like Maria with a red heart. But anytime Siri pronounces her, it's like, you're getting a call from Maria Red Hot. It's whatever. I don't care. Uh, what was I saying about my daughter growing up or whatever? The, uh, the irony and stupid thing is I have this mode on the iPhone. Like, the camera won't focus. But I have one of my focus modes. It's called Serious D&D. And on Serious D&D, in settings, there are none, people not allowed, apps not allowed, favorites not allowed, nothing. I use it, I'm using this when I'm uh, recording the course so people cannot call me and people are not allowed. I have no idea how my wife bypassed this. And I got the call. I have no idea. Wives, I guess. So what I've been saying. Um, yeah. So we went to Zico's room. And after finishing the podcast, I was supposed to download the slides and just record, rehearse my podcast a little bit. Podcast. Conference talk. Sorry. And um, as soon as I found my slides, I'm like, eh, I'll be fine if I do it tomorrow morning. And it was all, almost like 1 F. So we started talking about ideas like how we worked in the past, how we might work on some things in the future. I gave him an idea. He was supposed to sign an NDA, but we have another thing. I call it the Balkan NDA. Like the BNDA is basically, you don't need to sign anything. You just verbally agree that if this idea gets out of this room, you're going to be missing a part of your body. That's the Balkan NDA. So he had to sign that for an idea that I mentioned to him. I have way too many things that I want to build. And I don't know if we'll ever work together and in which configuration, because boy, we are like, we're too similar to be working together. It's like two forces pushing. It's like, I, I don't fucking know. But anyway, instead of rehearsing our talks, we were brainstorming ideas and shit almost until one... Like, the funny thing is I, I got dressed and I got... Like, I put on my jacket and my backpack and everything. So I have everything ready on me to leave. And Zico doesn't get the hint that I'm fucking tired. And he explains to me everything about server components. Like, this guy knows so much. It makes me... Like, it blows my mind. Like, how does he... He's just like a sponge for information. And he, like, he's supposed to have a talk on React server components and whatever. I thought he's preparing a 30-minute talk. And we didn't have time for me to listen to him preparing his talk because I thought it's going to be 30 minutes. Ironically, he speaks for 30 minutes explaining React server components. And today I'm like, oh, man, too bad we didn't rehearse your talk yesterday. It would have taken too long. It's like, oh, no, my talk is like a lightning talk. It's five minutes. Basically, the two most uncoordinated people on Earth tried to work together in the past, still uncoordinated, like lost lost souls in this world. So it was like 1 a.m. I go to the room, completely fucking drained from the day. And I'm like setting an alarm at seven o'clock and hoping for the best in the morning. So I wake up in the morning, super groggy. Like my daughter is used to this bed that basically swings her all night in, in her bedroom. Like if she makes a sound or whatever, the bed will start, you know, just um, rocking her back to sleep. Just like this camera is rocking now as I'm rocking on this seat. It's weird. Um, but now we have just this portable bed and she was waking up a little bit more. But after like five, 10 minutes of feeding, she would go back. And even though I sleep with headphones and mask and everything, you still can hear her when she wakes up. It was a very rough night. Let's say I slept for a couple of hours and I'm supposed to open the conference that morning. And someone like Max, uh, I, I was like, hey, w where were you? You kind of missed my talk. I was like fucking kidding. I don't care if people attend my talk or not. I mean, I, I would care if there's like four people in the audience, right? One of them, the bouncer, and one of them, a person from the street who came for the free lunch. But I, I'm usually roasting people. They're like, oh, you missed my talk, whatever. And he's like, dude, the strangest things happen. Like, I I could see that he just woke up. And he's like, my phone died in the middle of the night, just turned off. And I'm like, do you have an Android? Like, that might happen to an Android. He's like, no, I have an iPhone. And my my, my wife partner, like, woke me up this morning, um, basically telling me that my alarm didn't went off and I'm going to be late for my talk. And I'm like, holy shit, I have a new nightmare to think about from now on. That at some point, my phone just decided to turn off in the night and I'm going to be late at a conference or, or whatever, a flight. So now we'll have to set multiple alarms. Usually at home, I set it on the Alexa. On the uh, When we have a flight, dude, I set an alarm on, on my dog. I take my dog, I open the clock app, and I just rewind, you know, his fur until I get to like 6 a.m. for the flight. Like, is the Alexa, the Google Home? How many times can you say Alexa and you get pissed off that it trigger your assistant? Alexa, what are you going to do? Sue me? It's a free podcast. Chill. Um, so that's a new nightmare I have to think about, that from now on, my phone might die and I miss a talk. Anyway, wake up at 7. I hop in the shower. Uh, the baby's already up. But my wife has this phase, like she wants to sleep in a little bit more in the morning because she's tired. She's taking care of the baby at night. I have to sleep. 
So I'm doing this talk and she puts the baby next to her and uh, just rests basically. She cannot fully sleep, but she rests. And I come out of the shower and this like, God, I love her so much. She has this grin in the morning where, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about the baby because my wife didn't have a grin in the morning. She was just like on the pillow. But my daughter is like, motherfuckers, sleep is over. Like she has that face. Like she saw me coming from the shower and she went like, oh, dude, the day is starting. Let's party. And I'm like, what are you doing? Sleep, you little shit. It's like 7 a.m. She's just staring me, like literally made my day. I've mentioned this situation 17 times today. I'm still thinking about the way she smiled. And it was so heartwarming. I didn't want to leave that room and go to, to the conference talk. So it's like 7.30 or 7.40 a.m. I still haven't seen a slide from my conference talk because last time I gave it a year or something ago, I don't know when was the last time. If you're a conference organizer, <laughs> wink, wink, I would like to, to do more talks this fucking year, at least once per month. Um... And yeah, I go, uh, I haven't spoken a word to anyone except to my daughter, just whispering, you know, but that's not speaking to anyone. And then I go downstairs. There's this like Nero Cafe, we, which we don't have in Gdansk and Gdynia and, and like the Tri-City area of Poland. It's like a chain of cafes similar to Costa Cafe and similar to Starbucks. I think they also have it in London. I've been in London in Nero Cafe and I really love it. Like the vibe, it's freaking amazing. So it's like next to the hotel. I go there. I open my talk on YouTube. So that's the first thing I do. And I watched it three times at 2.2x speed. So probably people at the cafe was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Watching himself in love with himself, but I don't care. I was watching my talk three times and then I went through the slides. The third time, I pause on uh, on the video and basically I go back in the slides and make sure that I have a speaker's note for the thing. However, I'm always adding speaker's notes, but I, when I get in the flow dude of talking, as you can see here, like today, as every day with the podcast, I'm driving here, I'm like, should I fucking skip a day? Like, what the fuck am I going to talk about today? Is it going to be, oh, I'll just do it 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Next thing you know, I'm already talking for 11 minutes. So when I start talking during my talk, like I don't even look at speaker's notes or anything. I just kind of remember what was I saying in the past. But still, I was preparing my speaker's notes. It was like 8.30 a.m. And the conference starts at 8.45. They do the intro. I go on stage at 9. And I just text the organizers. I'll be there for you. So I text them, I'll be there soon. Don't worry. And it should worry because it's your boy, right? So I walked to the conference, still haven't uttered a word to anyone. I started vlogging on my phone just to start saying things like, hey, girls, what are we doing? Whatever. Because I need to warm up. So I had two uh, bottles of water and I had one coffee. But I've read that coffee dries your mouth in a way and you shouldn't do it before, you know, presentations and talking on a stage. I just couldn't, dude. I wasn't woken up enough to not have coffee. So I had coffee, I had water. I go there. I tried to talk to some people just to get my tongue warmed up. Oh, dude, it's, I just remember what happens. Oh, it's so cringe what happened this morning. So um, I, I go on stage. It's like 20 minutes before, uh, five minutes before the conference organizers have to do the intro. I go on stage and I have the MacBook here because the MacBook Pro looks like a Dell from 2005. Like yesterday I entered Zico's room and he has his fucking MacBook on, on the desk. And I'm like, oh, cool, with time travel. I'm like, oh, I thought this only happens in Netflix shows, like Dark. We time travel to, I don't know, the 80s where... Do you remember Chandler's laptop from Friends? That's the new MacBook Pros. Like, it's so chunky. I fucking hate it. Like, there was this old TV in the room and the old MacBook, and I was super concerned that we, like, time travel, but then I see Zico, he's the same age, and it was actually, like, what I'm saying is, fuck the fat MacBook Pros. Like, I don't know who looks at that, and is like, yeah, I want to buy this one and look at it every day. It's like, I hate it. I would, ironically, I'll get to the part where I might be buying one. So everything I've ever shit on, like, Electric cars, fuel cars, the, the Steam Deck, and whatever. Eventually, I end up buying it. So, whatever. Um, I go on stage, and this has happened to me once at a conference that I, I was supposed to also open the conference. There was way more people than this conference. And it was, I think, the first time giving this talk, so I was more nervous. And this slides, the, the HDMI, something happened. So, the funny thing at the conference was they couldn't load up my slides, but they didn't have time. So, I see the conference organizer who... Ironically, they, like she's she's this woman in Croatia, and she was like, "Where are you from?" I'm like, "From Macedonia." Which city? And I tell her Gostivar, and she's like, "Wait, I have a grandma in Gostivar. Like, we might be relatives, we might be cousins." So she starts calling relatives. Anyway, it was super fucking weird. But I see she's super friendly until you fuck up with your slides and whatever. So I see her there, you know, just like in the cartoons, like biting her nails and being nervous. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll start improvising my talk. So until I start with my talk, which I haven't given before, and this is this is what I'm telling a lot of speakers. If you can, without a slides, give at least half of your talk, then that's the talk you should be giving. So because I really, it sounds corny, cheesy, whatever, I give this talk from my heart. And that's why I had so little, 
Like in the past, I've been talking since 2016 and I've made only four conference talks. So I do one and then I give it, I think I've mentioned this before, that I give it in many conferences until I perfect it. But also, like I cannot just be passionate tomorrow about something else and write. I, I can make a new talk about some random technology, but it's going to feel like I'm reading a readme of, of that technology instead of actually, you know, being passionate about that, about what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is like I can, without the slides, I just started talking and I got, you know, like first, first someone handed me their phone. This was in Croatia. I'm talking about Croatia. Someone handed me their phone to read web dev jokes and puns, which warmed up the audience and made them laugh. And as I'm doing all of this, I see technicians coming on stage, like changing cables, changing. At some point, they take my laptop. They bring another laptop. I was expecting a crew to come, like, you know, like when they change tires, like what is it called? The the, the pit, like in Formula One, when they when the car goes into a thing. Jesus Christ, I'm 31 years old, lacking half of the words in the English language. I don't know what that thing called, but I was expecting them to go on stage and just start opening parts for my laptop and assemble it back. Like I have no, like I was trying to ignore all the people coming on and off stage. People are passing me dongles from the audience. They're like, hey, try my dongle. Sounds dirty, but I tried a lot of dongles that day and none of them worked. And I started improvising and I'm doing this and I got a couple of rounds of applause that I could do this without slides. And then people were tweeting like, holy shit, this is the first time I see this. And I guess, I'll, you know, for, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't that weird. And I think I can do it again, especially now when I practice the, the talk. But I, I promised myself, um, I'm not going to do this with the dongles. And from now on, I'm going to have a pro, even though it's chunky, where I can plug in HDMI. And then I saw the pro in person. I'm like, I'm not buying this. And I bought the MacBook Air because it's so nice and tiny. You can just grab it with two fingers like Kanye in that photo, you know, like holding the laptop with two fingers. I just like, it's so fucking portable. Anyway, it doesn't have an HDMI port. So today I go at the conference, I keep in my backpack two dongles and I'm ready. Like if one of them doesn't work, I have the other one. Guess what happens? 15 minutes, like two minutes before the conference has to start. They try the one dongle, no signal. I'm like, there's more. Pull out another dongle, dirty. Put it in the laptop, doesn't work. Conference organizer, naturally pissed. She's like, what's going on? Now, the savior of the day <laughs> is Zico just coming at the right time. And I'm like, can I borrow your laptop? And he's like, but at work, we have some, we track some. And I'm like, can I borrow your laptop? And he's like, fine, fine. You can borrow my laptop, but I need it for something later. I airdrop him my presentation. And that's not the only thing I airdropped that day. Let's let's call it that way. And I sit in the front with like sipping water because I'm nervous, like my mouth is so dry and I've spoken seven words in total this day. And the conference organizers have a 15 minute intro going on with slides and our sponsors and the lunch and the coffee and whatever they were talking about. And... I'm just sitting there with a the laptop and at some point <laughs> the conference organizer says something like when a speaker comes up on stage, like all of you should stand up. And I don't know what the, what, what the fuck they were saying. I was standing up. I just leaned a little bit and I forgot the laptop is in my lap. That, is, that why they, is that why they call it a laptop? This is like me realizing the word telegram for the app telegram because it's sending telegrams to a laptop. You put it on your lap. But you don't always use it in a lap. You didn't use like you could. Whatever, kids, it's going off point. Um, so I dropped the laptop, and it's like in the audience, there's like mixed sounds of like, ooh, all, oh, ah, ish, ah, and they just look at Zico. And I'm like, she, it's an expensive fucking MacBook, and the idiot, of course, specced it out, specced it out, meaning he got the highest configuration, which is like shit ton of money. So now I'm picking this laptop from the ground. Zico is trying to sit back in his seat, but his seat collapsed. Thankfully, Julian, I think, was the guy's name i don't want to butcher his name i don't think i, I think it's Ju i think it's julian so he he catches him like if that would have happened like the laptop fell i spilled the water thankfully didn't touch the laptop the, all the water like gathered under zico's seat and he was about to sit in the water on the ground in the first row while everyone from the audience is looking at this circus that's suddenly starting and I think that would have been the breaking point of her Zico to actually kick my ass. Like, he's been dealing with my shit for years, like, fixing my shitty code and doing all sorts of things. And if I broke his laptop and he sat in water, the, like, he would have beaten me with the actual laptop. But thankfully, he didn't. The guy caught him. He sits down. Now we pick up the laptop and it's the moment of through. You know, you turn around to people. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Like, chill. Jesus, what are you looking at? And then we pick up the laptop. And it, thankfully, the, the screen, keyboard, everything is fine. But it has a couple... Capel, Capel, so Russian. It has a couple of cosmetic things around the back, like scratches and shit. So now instead of thinking about my talk, I'm like, holy fuck, how am I going to, like, what am I going to do to correct this situation? You cannot, like, go to a place to fix that. He doesn't want to sell the laptop. It's a new laptop. So it, I started thinking about that. But anyway, I take the laptop, I go on stage. Now, when I go on stage, do I hold it properly or do I hold it with two fingers? Hold it with two fingers. And I'm like, if I broke it a little bit, let's break it completely, right? I go on stage, plug in the thing, 
I do my talk. Now, Polish audience, like there was Yanni, who is from Finland. Like he gave the intro for me. And Yanni was sitting in the first row and he was my biggest supporter. Like he was audibly laughing because my talk is funny. And he was audibly laughing at every third slide. Now, I see Polish people, like some of them were laughing, but you don't get an, a lot of audible laughs in Poland. Like there's this meme about Polish people smiling and people on video can see it. Like this is Polish people frowning and this is Polish people smiling. This is Polish people laughing out loud. This is what you get. That's it. Like I could see some of the people that would have a funny slide. Like I would see a guy in the audience just covering his head and everything like this, trying to suppress it. Like they're not going to catch me. And they're never going to get footage of me smiling. It's so fucking hilarious. But the funny thing was Yanni from Finland, different type of, you know, getting the humor and everything. Like he was audibly laughing every three times. He literally made my day. So there were more people laughing, but you know, Polish audience is tough. So uh, the talk went good. And I am proud of myself that I also improvised a lot. Like I had some slides that I was saying one thing about them. And suddenly, you know, just in the in the moment, I would say another joke. I would say something completely different about that slide. And the audience was still reacting because it's a react conference again. <laughs> I realize I don't have water with me. Um, so the conference went, the, the talk went well. And I went out and I'm like, Zico, what the fuck are we going to do about Reem? Like, he's like, don't worry, it's fine. If you want to do something, you can get me a D-brand skin and I'll just slap it on the back of the laptop. But I know that's not a solution. Like if some, oh, dude, if he dropped my laptop, probably it would have been fine for him. Someone else dropped my fucking laptop. It would have been a fucking nightmare. So I was like, yesterday was his birthday. I wanted to buy him a gift because we've been working and know each other for so fucking long. Wanted to buy him a nice gift, but we didn't go out to buy him a gift. And today I'm like, I just sent him money. I'm not going to say how much money or whatever. People are going to be like, it's too much or it's too little or whatever. When I sent him the money, he was like, dude, this is like too much. There's no need to send this much money. But I wanted to, I didn't want to sit with this feeling. Like I didn't break someone's laptop, but just seeing those couple of scratches on the back is like, no, like, it's, it, it's shitty. Especially if you're someone who takes care of your electronics. <laughs> your boy, it doesn't. Every single thing I have in life has been scratched. This watch so far is durable, but I'm going to find a way. To, to break, even though it's titanium and you can take it on a mountain and under the sea or whatever, I'll find a way to break it. That's not the point. We kind of got over that situation. You know, I, I, I was feeling better that I, I paid him some money about this, even though it was a shitty way to start the day. And then people started coming out and a lot of people, like, I was surprised at how many people said, hey, I listened to Kitsikast. Like, that was mind-blowing to me. That people come up in person and they're like, hey, I enjoy your show. I listen every day. I put it on my second monitor, this and that. It's like, it, it still blows my mind. So I guess thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a review, all of the to-do to list, join the Discord, join the Twitter. So that was amazing point number one. A uh, couple of people approached me about Benji and like one guy said, uh, hey man, um, I've tried, uh, st like he, he said, I'm paying for Benji. And I'm like, but but everything is free. And I still don't get, like Benji today crossed $10,000 in overall profit, which is amazing to me because 99% of the app is free. So people are literally paying for a free app because I have a button, this button. How much is this a grandma move what I did right now, right? Did they do the little thing with, with their little vests, you know, like like that? It's also like a Balkan neighbor. When a Balkan neighbor, especially a lady, goes to another lady to, to gossip, like they don't put a jacket or whatever, even if it's minus 14 degrees, they would just put, put on any fucking thing like this and they would hold it here in the center. If you're from the Balkan, you know what I'm talking about. They hold it like this and they cross, they cross the street. Anyway, tangents on tangents. What the fuck was I talking about? Jesus Christ. A laptop and a, yeah so this guy's like um i like all of the features uh, no he said i use four or five features in benji but the one that makes a difference for me is the habits view it's a table and i can also filter my personal habits and my work habits now when i added a feature called work habits like you can mark a habit as work i thought like probably i'm the only one who's going to use this but I don't do analytics, like I don't dive into people's data to know how many people have work habits or whatever, like I don't like dealing with that shit. But someone validating my, my idea in person was really nice, telling me, hey, I really love work habits and that's why I'm paying for your app. So more people approached about Benji. Uh, there's a lot of Sizi users who have been even using it for the start, so from the start, so at this point I'm used to people coming up and saying, hey, I use Sizi, I like Sizi, whatever. But people talking about Kitsikast and Benji was new and interesting to me. So I, I guess thank you if you're a Benji user. Again, everything is still free. I have to keep in mind which op I have to think about which features I'm going to make paid. I think I'm going to keep like four or five basic features free and then everything else is like extra, extra. It's going to go with paid. So I guess if you go and get that believer plan right now, that's like the low. It's like it comes to four dollars per month, I think it's like forty nine dollars per year or something like that. So it's like that's the lowest price and people who are going to lock it in at this price, they're going to keep it forever, basically. And then at some point, I'm going to flip the switch and have like a proper more expensive pricing plan and a lot of the free features are going to be disabled. That's the plan. We'll see what's going to happen. 
So talk to more people. I love just meeting random people at these conferences. And I encourage people to come and talk to me after the talk because for some reason people are intimidated, I don't want to say, by speakers. Just because this person has been on stage doesn't mean like they know more than you or whatever. So I like it when people approach me and talk to me about about whatever. Telling me about their business, telling me that their life is hard because they have two kids and three kids and how chaotic it is. So there have been a lot of... Um, like there's this guy who was selling also developer tools and as soon as I, I was about to give him an advice like don't um, you cannot sell this tool like no one's going to buy it and he just slams me back with oh I already monetize it and it makes like $2,000 per month and I'm like well I guess your boy sometimes wrong so it's nice to get all of these different experiences like one pattern that I see like I the reason why I speak at these conferences is to, to, to drill the things I have in my mind into other people's heads but this thick skulled headed people which are developers are so hard to con to be convinced to just fucking ship the thing dude like there's this guy who i met today i think he's been following me on twitter uh but i met him in person for the first time and he's been telling me about an idea and i've worked on something similar uh but in a very shittier state i launched it like a show gpt maybe you know it and i closed it after a while because i had too many things on my plate so he's making something similar and he keeps describing it like it's not ready and the ui is not polished and blah 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 and i have more work to do and later i see him demoing that to Zeke when I go from the back and I'm like is this the app you've been talking about who made the design and he's like I made everything from scratch the design the buttons the whatever and I see the features and the moment he dragged and dropped a file I'm like you have drag and drop you add that after the second year of making revenue and basically hiring th after you hire three you cannot add drag and drop to your app before you hire three people motherfucker so he has drag and drop all of these nice features. The app looks beautiful. It's a genius idea. And he still thinks it's early to share it with people. And this is like millions of developers think, th think this way. If you want to watch my talk, it's called GitHub Stars Won't Pay Your Rent. If this resonates with you, like you have a project, you want to monetize it, yada, yada, yada. You can go watch this talk. It's it's not on my YouTube, but if you search for Kitsa GitHub Stars, like you'll find it. And it's basically, I don't want to drone on now for 30 minutes in this in this podcast and talk about that. Maybe eventually... When I don't have anything to talk about in a podcast, I can just do my talk, but in an audio form. So I think that would also be interesting. Anyway, so a lot of people came up and they're like, oh, bro, I hear you. Like, this was a great talk because it's exactly what I've been thinking about, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to monetize this, trying to do that. It's been nice, you know, talking and bonding with all these people. Then I stayed until lunch because I'm still doing my fasting and yada, yada, yada. But today I completely bailed on the diet. You know, remember the diet? Um, I kind of felt good about myself. I'm like, okay, you're losing weight, chill. You're traveling. It's one day in Warsaw. You're not going to die if you don't eat something. So the conference organizers, they actually had a bunch of healthy food, which I've never seen this at a conference. Usually it's like croissants and coffee. <laughs> Most cheap conferences would be like, yeah, you don't need more than a croissant. It's a lunch, right? So, but here they have all sorts of food and they had a lot of healthy things. So I ate a lot of, um, I don't know, hummus, carrots, peppers, cherry tomatoes, a bunch of other things. But I also tried couple of pastries with spinach and whatever. So I cheated on my no bread, no whatever diet. It wasn't that bad because I didn't have a lot of food today. But I still, um, yeah. So then talking with a lot of people, like I get socially drained after talking to so many people for so long. And after a while, I just like, I went back to the hotel room. I, I excused myself and I was like, guys, I got to go. I just can't, I can't do this anymore. And I feel like I'm at a point in life where I need to start attending different conferences. Like I'm so burned out when we form like a little group of developers and they're all talking about some, super nerdy shit that doesn't matter to me when I'm making a startup and when I'm talking about the end user, they're not going to see any of this shit. But it's funny seeing Zico and other young people who are basically still enthusiastic about all of this that a tool for the law is going to change the way, it's not going to change anything for the customer. So I'm ju I just get drained by these conversations and I'm like, well, maybe you shouldn't go to, because it's hard to pick the people who are working on a business, like always someone's going to start a topic, usually Zico, about development and about yada, yada, yada. And I just, when I find myself in that circle, I'm like, I just, it's too much for me. Like, I don't care about it anymore. Like I used to care. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make this nice tool and whatever. Now I just think only about the user, only about how I can ship features that are going to make users' life better. And that's where I draw the line. And I don't care if a new shiny technology or a tool comes along. I'm trying not to fall for the hype. With everything that I've heard today at the conference, honestly, like there's so many new things, yada, yada, yada. I still think that the stack that I picked for my course, Zero to Ship, like it's Blitz, as I mentioned, it's not as maintained. The conference organizer was one of the maintainers. Um, Zico was also one of the maintainers. So Brander, who created Blitz, I mentioned that he started flying airplanes. He forgot about the freaking thing. And I still think with everything going on in React and server components or whatever, I still think Blitz is one of the best ideas around. Like it's the easiest way 
to implement authentication, server access, mutation. I don't want to make the, I don't want to make this podcast too nerdy. Let's not go into programming details. But I think the stack that I picked for zero to ship. If you go and get the course and you stick to this stack and you don't go to conferences and you don't change your package JSON and you don't fall for the hype, I still think that you can actually ship full stack apps without being a full stack developer. Like I wasn't full stack developer a couple of years ago. Now I can do everything because I found this like magical. I call it the magic stack. Anyway, that was the conclusion, I guess, from the conference. I just excused myself, went to the room. And my wife, like, she knows me. Like, after talking for a while, I entered the room, like, hi, how are you? And she's like, you don't want to talk, right? And I'm like, I just make a gesture. And I sit and I mindlessly scroll Twitter just to get this. Like, I, I've been talking to, like, it's it's too much for me. And I'm like, for the next month, I don't want to talk to anyone, maybe except my daughter. She's the only one who gets permission to, to talk to me. She's still not talking to me. She's trying to. This kid is going to talk when she's like, Six point half months old. I swear to God, and she's been trying so much, making all sorts of funny sounds. She's on the verge of of saying a word. It's hilarious. Um, yeah. So the conference ended. What happened? I went with my wife. We went uh, for a walk. We were taking funny pictures of Stephanie with monuments in Warsaw because it's like she's sleeping. She's in a coma, like, like that. And we took a picture of her in the stroller with like a monument in in Warsaw. It's hilarious to us. I realized as I scroll through my photo gallery and I want to show pictures to people for my baby. I realized like you're not going to be this person and your baby is only interesting to you. I realized that with my dog and my baby. Like maybe in your closest family circle, people will be interested. But most of the time, deal with this. People don't give a shit. Like I'm not going to, you know, go to everyone and be like, look at my baby in front of a monument. They'll be like, yeah, whatever. AI can generate dogs eating ice cream right now. So that's not that interesting. So we went to, we always find ourselves in a mall, but just traveling with the baby is so new. And we still haven't, you know, we still haven't, Yesterday, we tried sitting at a restaurant for 15 minutes. And as I mentioned, we took the food for takeout. Um, so we're still trying to get her trained, not trained because she's not a puppy, but she hasn't been in this many situations for us to go to a restaurant. So we go to a mall just in case she starts a situation. We're not trapped in the restaurant. We could just move from the food court to another thing to maybe go to one of the changing rooms and change her and my wife can breastfeed her or whatever. So from all the fucking places in Warsaw to eat, like the reason why I love Warsaw compared to my city, even though I haven't tried the restaurants in my city, like the culture here and the restaurants is way more did diverse. And I honestly, I think one of the reasons, like one of the cons, one of the reasons I would want to sell the house eventually is I would want to move to a place that's more diverse. Like I, I enjoy this culture so much. And Warsaw is not, you know, it's London. It's not London. It's not Amsterdam. When you see like everything, you, you know, around you, it's like, I enjoy, I feel more accepted. Like when I sp- see all of these people wearing all sorts of clothes, all sorts of cultures from all over the world, like all sorts of cuisines, all sorts of restaurants, I feel more welcome and I feel more accepted because I'm still from another country here, you know, and I feel nicer. So when I'm here, there's like so many restaurants on my, like if you go to my Google map, there's like so many green flags or where where would I want to eat? And then eventually, <laughs> like my wife ordered some food, like some noodles with whatever from an Asian place. She tried once and she's like, I'm throwing literally just tried one. And it's like, this is so bad. Dumped it. And I got so burned out from this day because I haven't slept enough. And I'm just fucking tired, dude. My mouth was burning for like Coke. I wanted to have not, not cocaine. Maybe I had cocaine. I'm not going to tell you that. Because YouTube will ban me. And you don't get that in a food court. There's like that KFC and um, Subway. And then there's like the Coke place. So Subway had a Coke machine or Coca-Cola. Mom, if you're watching this, she says she's not watching this. Even though they're watching Crypto Bros in Serbia. And every day she was like, I don't have time for your vlogs. She said it. I never forgot it. Hurts to the heart. I'm kidding. I'm actually glad. Like the last thing that I want, my grandpa is trying to find subtitles to watch this. Please, world, block him somehow. I don't want my family listening to my rambling. It's like, I don't want that. Tangents on tangent. What's, what was I saying? Food court. Yeah. Wife dumping that in a trash. So from all the place, all the diverse places to eat in fucking Warsaw, we ended up eating food in Subway. So man, that Coca-Cola with ice was so fucking refreshing. Yes, I broke that habit. I'm a, I am I want to market in Benji. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to tell you I did all my habits today. We ate like half a sub um, and it wasn't good. Like this is literally the worst sandwich I ever had. I love Subway in other places, but this guy somehow burned the fucking thing. I'm like, you know, this day cannot get any worse. Good. We go out with my daughter and it starts raining. And did your boy pack everything but forgot the rain cover in the sub trunk? Martin, if you're still listening to this, other cars don't have a sub trunk. So there's like extra large space below your trunk where usually I don't know what the fuck gas cars have there but anyway <laughs> I guess because of that feature I actually forgot the rain cover and your boy feels like Superman in the moment like it, it is cold outside and everyone's going with hats and jackets I take off my jacket and I just put it over the cart and my wife is like 
over the um, cart. It's not a shopping cart. It's a, what is it called? A stroller. I put it over the stroller. My wife's like, it's not raining that much. You shouldn't. And I'm like, I want to, I want to save her. I want to do every, I would go naked if I have to, but there's not going to be a raindrop falling on my daughter's head. That's not how that song went. Raindrops falling on my daughter's head. It's dun dun in jacket instead, whatever. I'm tired, dude. How long is this? It's 9.21 and this has been 35 minutes long. Okay, I need to wrap up. So I put the jacket. We walked to the hotel. It's like a 20 minute walk. Um, and uh, yeah, we stayed in a hotel room a little bit. Shit posting on Twitter. We went to Nero Cafe with my daughter. Fucking loved the experience. Just wearing her in the fucking carrier thing and showing her things and she just looks at things and tries to touch things. It's fucking amazing. Now, went back. My wife is putting her to sleep. I packed all of this equipment. As you can see, I'm in the car with all of my equipment just to record this. And now I think I'll meet with Zico for a while just to hang out with the other people for a little bit, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, because I'm dead. Tomorrow morning, I have to come here, pick up the car. I'm going to tell you tomorrow. how it, I don't know how the day is going to go. Now I have to take an Uber. No, now I have to walk back for like 30 minutes probably. And tomorrow, I don't know how the day is going to go. We're planning to leave to drive around 9, 10 a.m., which means realistically we're going to start driving at, at 1 p.m. And that's the trip. I'm super happy with... This was our first family trip with a baby, and I think it was a huge success because she's not sleeping in the bed at home, but she was sleeping for most of the night. She got used to the car. She was sleeping for four or something hours, four and a half hours in the car. So she was sleeping in the stroller today for like two and a half hours while we were exploring around. So I would call this a win trip. The conference was great. Met a lot of people, gained a bunch of new followers, got a bunch of opportunities and DMs with we can do this together, that together. You know, while the hype of the conference is there, then realistically, you're not going to do anything with the people. But... Um, it is exciting. I guess that's it for today, dude. I don't want to, like, let's do the Benji review another time because my habits and everything. Like, we don't want to, this is the wrong day for doing the Benji review. But yeah, tomorrow we're back to the normal schedule. I'm going to record the podcast at home and I'm actually going to share my screen. I'm going to try to mark the habits and tell you where did I go wrong? What did I do right? I shouldn't beat myself so hard about taking a cheat meal. Like, half a sub is not going to kill me. And actually, there's some nutritionist or a guy in the comments who said, like, he understands nutrition. Like, everyone on the internet is a doctor, nutritionist or whatever. Uh, I just realized the car turned off and I might be locked inside. So that's great. I might sleep here, whatever. It's a comfortable car, Martin. Um, so he said, um, I was coaching a couple of clients and actually they had the opposite issue of losing weight. We needed to add calories, like a reverse diet. You know, like they needed to eat more food and I'm like, I'll stop you right fucking there. I don't, I don't need the scientific explanation. All I heard from you is you need to eat more food to lose weight. Say no more. And today I had Subway. I, I guess it was sponsored by the fucking nutritionist. So I guess that's it. I need to wrap up. I need to drive back. No, I cannot drive back because the car is stuck here. I'm going to walk back and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Join the Discord. Join the Twitter. Do all of the to-do list things that you need to do. They're all in the description. And I will see ya in the next one. You donuts. Bye-bye. Leave a donut in the comment if you watch until here. You're out of your mind. Bye-bye.